Odds are, if you're thinking of taking an Antarctica expedition, then you're a regular traveler or an avid cruiser. While we count ourselves in that mix, we learned a lot from our trip, and we want to make sure you avoid some of our mistakes. So we put together this video to help ensure your expedition to Antarctica is smooth sailing. So let's dive in. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one board at a time. Visiting Antarctica is a bucket list destination for many travelers. So before you take the plunge, do some homework and make sure you pick the right cruise line. As you begin researching cruises to Antarctica, you might be surprised at how many options you'll uncover. Thus, it's extremely important to pick the right cruise line and cruise ship for your Antarctica expedition. We're accustomed to sailing on larger ships from the mainstream cruise lines. And when researching options, we noticed that several of these brands like Celebrity Cruises, Holland America Line, Norwegian Cruise Line, and Princess Cruises to name some, offer itineraries that claim to visit Antarctica. However, you gotta read the fine print as these cruises do not include shore landings. So you sail by parts of Antarctica but you just simply see the coast from the comforts of your cabin or the outdoor decks. That's why we highly recommend you consider a smaller cruise ship when visiting the continent. These vessels are often better equipped to sail the icy waters and reach more remote destinations. Think icebreakers and polar class expedition ships. And thus, you can get off the vessel and trek along the coast and experience Antarctica up close and personal. These ships range from luxury cruise lines to retrofitted research vessels. As luck would have it, actually one thing we did do correctly on this trip is we booked our Antarctica cruise with Atlas Ocean Voyages, which offers the perfect combination of a traditional cruise experience with the ability to actually step foot on the continent without being too adventure focused. When compared to other luxury lines like Seaborne, Silver Sea, or Viking that have expedition vessels, the voyages on Atlas Ocean Voyages are also considerably less expensive. While we luckily did pick the right cruise ship for our expedition, we may not have chosen the right time to actually go to Antarctica. The Antarctica cruise season generally runs from November until March. Like any seasonal destination, the shoulder season, early or late in the season, have some benefits like lower prices and fewer crowds, which of course we took advantage of. However, the middle of the cruise season or peak season will generally have the best weather and more wildlife sightings. We did our cruise in early November. The best time to actually cruise Antarctica is generally considered the middle of December to about February. During that time, there's more daylight, warmer temperatures, and it's peak time for penguins and whales. During our cruise, we did see a lot of penguins and we saw some pods of whales out in the distance, but we also encountered very snowy weather, rough seas, and had several of our ports of call canceled due to these conditions. But cruising in November does have some benefits too, like snow cover and sea ice have yet to melt, affording some beautiful landscapes, and it really makes it feel like you're in Antarctica. But if we were to ever visit the region again, we would definitely have sailed later in the season, probably sometime in January after the new year. So keep that in mind when investigating your Antarctica expedition and weigh the pros and cons of going mid-season where it's more expensive versus the shoulder season where the weather is more unpredictable. When we told our family and friends that we were taking our first cruise to Antarctica, they naturally had some questions. They know we like to cruise, but going to the Caribbean or the Bahamas or even Alaska is much different than going to Antarctica. Plus, what is there to do and see? And you might be wondering the same exact things. So let's clear up a couple misconceptions here. Of course, when you go to Antarctica, you'll see a lot of beautiful scenery. Snow, icebergs, sea ice, and other natural landscapes. You will see plenty of birds, penguins, leopard and elephant seals, and possibly whales. The more common penguins are Gentoo and Chinstrap species, with a deli and emperor species found further south. The one animal you will definitely not see in Antarctica is a polar bear. Antarctica cruises do not offer your typical shore excursions. Most expedition cruise lines include Zodiac safaris, and shore landings in the price of the cruise fare. Zodiac rides can consist of scouting for wildlife or just admiring the icebergs and glaciers. Shore landings will usually consist of taking a Zodiac boat to shore, a wet landing, and then some kind of walk or hike while ashore. 
some cruise lines offer additional limited capacity excursions, such as kayaking, paddle boarding, or camping, all of which are an upcharge. One thing we didn't think about when planning this trip were the regulations. Everything in Antarctica is highly regulated. Thus, all the cruise lines need to follow strict rules put forth by the International Association of Antarctica Tour Operators. This organization promotes environmentally responsible travel. So you'll need to abide by these rules when going ashore, which tends to mean you're not able just to wander off on your own far distances. You normally have to keep to the shore or to an already marked out perimeter or take an exact hiking trail that's already been carved out by the expedition team. The one thing you need to be super careful of when packing is to not overpack. And I know, yes, if you follow our channel, you know we're self-confessed overpackers. But we'll admit, we definitely overpacked for this cruise to Antarctica. While the weather is cold, it's not as cold as we expected, at least for us New Englanders. Similar to Alaska cruises, layers are essential when going to Antarctica. Although we recommend you invest in some warmer wool-based layers, you will most definitely need waterproof pants as well, like rain or ski pants, which we didn't own either one of those, so it was a trip to L.L. Bean to do a little shopping. The wind is what makes Antarctica feel colder, even though the temperatures hovered around 30 degrees Fahrenheit most of our trip. Thus, make sure to pack gloves, hats, and gaiters or scarves. That way you have those light layers that you can take on and off from the Zodiac ride versus walking ashore on a shore excursion. Before you make the mistake of overpacking, be sure to know what your cruise line provides. Most cruise lines provide a parka, so you can leave heavy coats at home. A lightweight, packable puffer coat might still be beneficial for going outside while on the ship. If you tend to get cold, of course, know your own temperature regulation, you may want to pack a fleece jacket or sweatshirt as a middle layer as well. Additionally, you'll need tall, waterproof boots for shore landings. However, your cruise line might provide them for you, allowing you to leave the heavy footwear at home. Again, Atlas Ocean Voyages shined because not only did we get a parka, a nice bright green one, they also provide waterproof boots to all cruisers. But once again, just check if your particular cruise line does provide them before packing your own. Keep in mind, there's a lot of time on the ship itself, and the temperature is climate controlled. We packed sweatshirts and sweaters for every day of our trip, and we did not end up using half of them. Some passengers even walked around the ship in shorts and sandals during the day. When it comes to evening attire, these cruises are more casual. If you like to dress up for dinner, you can still pack a few dressier outfits, but you can leave the formal wear at home for most cruise lines. Even though you're cruising to Antarctica, don't forget items such as sunglasses, sunscreen, and lip balm. They are essential. We also recommend packing a waterproof bag, as most cruise lines do not provide these to cruisers, and you want to make sure that technology, those cameras, action cameras, any lenses you might bring, are kept nice and dry during those Zodiac rides. You'll also want to bring a water bottle if your cruise line does not provide one for you. And perhaps most importantly, don't forget your bathing suit, and we will explain why a little bit later in this video. As you figured out by now, cruising to Antarctica is all about exploration. Whether you're scenic cruising past majestic landscapes or actually going to shore, it is really otherworldly. With that being said, you need to be realistic of your own fitness levels if you're participating in shore landings. You will likely be trekking over sandy, muddy, snowy, and icy surfaces. You will likely also need to complete wet landings meaning you will need to wade through shallow water to get from a Zodiac boat to shore. During these landings, you will need to walk or hike over uneven terrain, so proper footwear and walking sticks are recommended. Many cruise lines do provide walking sticks, but some require you to rent them or bring your own. Don't worry though, you don't need to be a polar explorer to still experience Antarctica. Oftentimes, the expedition team will map out different paths with varying levels of difficulty, so you can avoid those steeper, more rugged climbs if you like. And there are also plenty of expedition team members on hand to guide you in your explorations, answer questions, and hey, even take some photos of you along the way. That being said, neither Heidi nor I are the outdoorsy type. And if you follow our channel, you know, we don't do any camping or hiking or 
visit a lot of national parks. So if that's your thing, going to Antarctica, you should be all set. And we would say on our trip, about 50% of the individuals were gung-ho, did the most extensive, most difficult climbs, while the other half of the cruisers range from basically staying ashore and not even attempting some of the climbs to getting maybe halfway up. And that's where I would put myself. I would say I did basically the medium level of difficulty for the different hikes or exploring for the different landings. Now, of course, some cruise lines have even more rigorous or strenuous ashore programming. So just make sure to do some research so you know what the expectations are for fitness levels for your expedition cruise. As we mentioned, all cruise lines need to follow specific regulations in Antarctica, which means guests are limited to how much time they can spend ashore. Given these guidelines, there can only be 100 individuals ashore at any one stop at any time. And this cap not only includes guests, but also includes the expedition team members from your cruise line. During our Atlas cruise on World Voyager, our scheduled Zodiac rides were about 60 minutes and shore landings were capped to around 90 minutes to allow everyone on board the same experience. In ideal weather conditions, that means there were two outings a day. This means at most you're exploring for about three hours a day, not to mention it takes about two days each way to cruise through the Drake Passage. But if you're reading between the lines, this means there's a lot of downtime during your Antarctica expedition where you're just sitting on the ship. While mainstream cruise lines feature a host of amenities and activities, most expedition vessels do not have as many offerings. There won't be a plethora of bars and lounges, there's no casino or production shows, or your typical sea day happenings from the cruise director staff, and definitely no belly flop contests. There might be some live music in the evening or an occasional trivia session here and there, but otherwise you need to make your own fun while waiting to go ashore or waiting for your group's turn to be called for a Zodiac ride. So we definitely suggest you bring some books, maybe some playing cards or small games to keep yourself occupied. Now let's talk about that Drake Passage. It's almost a rite of passage for cruising to Antarctica to have to navigate this body of water, which is notorious for having some of the roughest seas in the world. The Drake Passage is located between South America's Cape Horn and the South Shetland Islands, meaning there's no resistance from any land masses. Thus, waves over 10 meters are not uncommon. For our particular itinerary, there were two days of cruising this passage towards Antarctica and two days on the return trip to Ushuaia. And admittedly, this voyage is not for everyone. Neither Heidi nor I are prone to motion sickness. And during our two days down, we encountered what the captain claimed was some of the roughest seas imaginable with 10 to 12 meter waves. Yes, 30 to 35 foot swells during this voyage. Thankfully, we did not have any symptoms of seasickness, but plenty of the crew and our fellow passengers did. In fact, one night during our voyage, we were the only passengers in one of the bars because everyone else was in their room or somewhere else not feeling so well. But on our way back, the Drake Passage was pretty calm with only three to four meter waves. So it is really the roll of the dice if you'll experience the Drake Lake or the Drake Shake on your sailing, but you need to be prepared. There are a variety of remedies for seasickness ranging from green apples and ginger, to sea bands to over-the-counter meds and prescription medication. You should just contact your doctor and discuss which options are appropriate for you and pack them just in case. And even if you don't experience motion sickness, believe us, it may be still challenging to walk a straight line or get up and down the stairs if the seas are rough. This is just something else to keep in mind if you have any troubles with bounds. It's also important to note if the seas are that rough, the outdoor areas will likely be closed, just spending even more time indoors with limited access to fresh air. This is where your cabin choice is super important. Lines like Atlas and Viking offer infinite veranda type balconies, which we find ideal in Antarctica. And for this trip, we're so glad we have what Atlas refers to as a horizon stateroom, which allowed us to still experience some of the Drake Passage without having to worry about being physically outside on a balcony. While cruises to Antarctica won't feature Broadway entertainment or silent discos, they do have plenty of enrichment focused activities for the more curious travelers. From talks about history and geography of Antarctica to its geopolitical underpinnings and the Antarctica Treaty, to discussions on penguins, whales, and birds, 
The expedition team will host several lectures throughout your voyage. Your cruise line will also likely have daily briefings where the expedition team will review the day's events and prep for the anticipated activities for the following day. Some cruise lines have a more scientific focus with educational presentations from onboard researchers and experts. Viking even has an onboard science lab where guests can participate in some of the ongoing research. While the onboard activities might be different than a typical cruise experience, these enrichment activities will help to provide a greater connection and understanding of this magnificent destination. Even if you're on a luxury cruise ship with a spacious cabin for your Antarctica expedition, odds are you'll need some extra storage and accessories to handle all of your gear. Luckily, there are some items that we always pack for a cruise, we just actually just leave in our cruise bag, which helped us keep our cabin in order. First and foremost, our magnetic hooks. Since the walls of any cruise ship are magnetic, you can use these hooks for extra storage. We always use them to hang items like bags and jackets. However, they were even more helpful this trip to dry clothing after a day ashore. We also pack an over-the-door shoe organizer to store smaller items. This is great for storing things like toiletries, for this trip, our gloves and hats, other small electronics, tech chargers, meds, and more. This will help free up closet and drawer space to actually store clothing and some of those bulkier accessories. If you've never used packing cubes before, we highly recommend them. They can help keep your clothing organized and make packing and unpacking a breeze. After unpacking, store your luggage under the bed so it's out of the way for the duration of the trip. Some other items you may want to consider packing are a laundry bag to sew away dirty laundry, portable chargers to keep you powered up during your time ashore, and clips to ensure your window curtains stay shut if you're sensitive to light while trying to sleep. We didn't know what to expect when it came to Wi-Fi while cruising to Antarctica. Would the end of the world actually have connectivity? Well, we were pleasantly surprised that it did, and it worked extremely well in Atlas Ocean Voyages. Now, this will vary greatly by cruise line, but if your cruise ship advertises Starlink, you can count on having some connectivity. We were able to check email, use some social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook, and even make a few Teams meetings. Video streaming and video-based platforms like YouTube or TikTok probably won't work though. If you need to stay in touch with family back home, consider using WhatsApp. This worked much better for us during the trip than iMessage or Facebook Messenger. While the Wi-Fi did work surprisingly well, it might come at a price. If you plan to use this service, make sure you know the cost of your cruise line's Wi-Fi packages. Currently, Atlas Ocean Voyages offers guests a one gigabyte of free Wi-Fi and you can buy additional gigabytes, although they were pretty expensive. Most importantly, whether you plan to use Wi-Fi or not, make sure your phone is in airplane mode. You can still use the ship's Wi-Fi service with your phone in airplane mode and will avoid roaming charges. We know this is what you were really waiting for. Do you think I would go all the way to Antarctica and not do the polar plunge? For those brave enough to take a dip in the frigid waters, most cruise lines sailing the region will offer a polar plunge. Of course, this activity is weather dependent and may not happen on all sailings. Basically, you'll don a bathing suit and a bathrobe, then head to the designated area of your ship, like the mudroom or a similar space. From here, the staff will tether you in and instruct you on the process. Now, in my personal experience, it's over so quick that you barely realize how cold it actually is. I would say the entire experience from countdown jump into the water and climb back up the ladder was maybe 30 seconds. Don't worry, there are plenty of staff on hand and you're attached to a safety line just in case anything happens during your polar plunge. On our ship, more than 60% of the passengers completed this rite of passage without any incidents. And every single person I talked to who did it was so glad that they went through with it. In case you're wondering, the water temperature during our sailing was about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And not only did I get a photo to commemorate my polar plunge, I also earned a shot or two of tequila upon my return to warm up. As you gather by now, a trip to Antarctica is a once in a lifetime experience, but venturing to this polar region can be very unpredictable. Weather can change in an instant. So the most important tip is to be flexible. Your excursion times might get changed. Your itinerary might be altered. You may miss some planned port stops. Your highly anticipated camping or kayaking tour 
may get canceled at the last minute. There might be pleasant weather one minute and snow and wind the next. You might have a convoy crossing or swells of 30 feet. You get the point. When cruising to Antarctica, you have to play by the rules of Mother Nature. Instead of complaining or getting upset, just take a step back and enjoy the surrounding. Remember, you are one of the lucky few who can say they've actually experienced this polar region. Now, after watching this video, we're sure you're super excited to go on an Antarctic expedition, and we can't say enough great things about Atlas Ocean Voyages. In fact, you should check out our complete Atlas Ocean Voyages Antarctica Expedition Cruise Review right here on YouTube. In that video, we go into great detail about everything on the ship, from the dining to the accommodations and the enrichment, to detailing everything we did for our expedition, from the Zodiac rides to the shore landings. We cover it all to help ensure your next trip is smooth sailing.